So as you can see, different people come from different backgrounds, different art forms, music, performing <coughs> arts, literary arts, visual arts, etc. Coming together to this particular program, which is very diverse, right? So it really embraces a lot of different people from different training background to come and interact and have that conversation to develop both your pedagogical framework in terms of your artistic practice, right? So that you can teach better, but also to be able to interact with a different art form, a different artist to inform your own pedagogy. And maybe I'll just share a little bit of my own journey as an arts educator. Come with me to 2004 in a very dusty, hot and humid day at Kaki Pukit Center Prison School. I was teaching there and when I stepped out of my classroom, my students stopped me there. And he said, Mr. Edmund, sir, I don't think I can do it. So I asked what happened. I just came out from PC, which is the punishment cell, and I had a fight. So, okay, um, let me see what I can do, and I will find someone to replace you. So a bit of background, a, a bit of context. So I'll call him Rambo. Rambo is the lead actor in our first ever prison club theater production. And uh, he is a big, tall, muscular man playing a woman as a lead character, or fiance of a, a man who had been incarcerated. And um, for him, he had been struggling with that role. I mean, artistically, he was fine playing that role. But once he goes back into the dormitory and the cell, you know, he had a lot of names being hurled at him. And he, you know, he reacted and he started fighting. And so I told him, OK, um, I'll speak to the principal. I'll try to find someone to replace you. But if I can't, maybe we can uh, cancel that, that program. But I was lying because I couldn't cancel the program. Right? My head would roll because 12 days later, after this, this conversation, members of the public would be coming into the prison school and guests of honor would be coming in, they are ministers, to watch the first Yellow Ribbon Project. So Yellow Ribbon Project is the first um, prison-wide initiative to give inmates a second chance, right? especially when they're released, employers would be hiring them. So this was the very first showcase in 2004, and 12 days later, the show would go on. And I told him whatever I said. So I wasn't sure what would happen, but I knew that if I cancel, my head would roll. But I also knew that I didn't want him to go through distress. You know, as an arts educator, I didn't want him to be put on display to perform just because he had to, right? He had already been punished, for, for going through a lot of distress over being called names, you know, Bapo, CC, or whatever, Aqua. These are all the derogatory names that people use when they, when they know that you are playing a different role or cross-dressing. And in a very hyper-masculine, incarcerated kind of a context, it becomes a lot more heightened, you know, in terms of your masculinity and, and ideas of gender roles. So I realized that I didn't want him to be placed like a showpiece, even though people were coming in to, to watch. Because I felt that I needed to, in some way, give him the ability and the, the, the agency to say no. Right? Because for me, as an arts educator, it was the aesthetic experience that mattered. For me, it was a process that mattered for him. Right? I didn't want him to just perform a show and tell and then once the show is over, he would go back and then he would be punished or he would be ridiculed, etc., and mocked by his uh, friends. Fortunately, he, he agreed to do it. And after the show, after the performance, they gave him a standing ovation. And he came up to me and he thanked me and he said, Mr. Edmund, thank you for believing me. It was a very good experience. Um, he, he just thanked me and he, he teared up. I teared up as well. And that's when I realized that 
the arts had a transformative power. Right? When we are able to liberate ourselves from these conditions, we're able to connect with something deeper, right? about our expressivity, about imagination. You know, I think that allowed him to imagine and be on stage out of those chains right? that he was imprisoned uh, in. So I, that changed my life completely. How? Because I was an English language and literature teacher before that. I was teaching the O-levels, N-levels, and the A-levels. But when my principal asked me to start a drama club in prison, I wasn't adequate. I wasn't equipped. But I had training in theater studies in my first year of undergraduate studies. And then I realized, OK, I could do it. But after a while, I didn't have enough expertise. You know, I didn't have enough tools to, to further you know, advancing this art form. And that's when I realized I needed to take up a master's in applied theater. And after that, that was in New York. And then I, I realized that I was able to use theater for a lot of different things. Right? So I started using it in, uh, I continued to do work in prisons in New York as well. I worked with psychiatric patients to do drama therapy, uh, with drama therapists, and then continued my work in communities, different kinds of settings. And then when I came back, continued working in the prisons, etc. But now, a lot more qualified, felt more confident to do you know, life skills, for example, using the art form to do other things, to, to teach social emotional competencies in, in the prisons. And then eventually, I decided to do my PhD after many years. And then I applied that to a refugee situation. I, I did my uh, PhD in Afghanistan, looking at theater in a war zone. So that's a little bit of my story. And that's why I'm teaching where I'm teaching and why I'm loving what I teach. Because I realized that as an educator, I was also in the arts, and when I married the art form and my educator's hat, I realized I could transfer my knowledge and skills in a lot of ways, right? I'm not just stuck in the theater mode, right, just performing, but I took on a very different kind of a mindset to, to make a change through that aesthetic experience.